last class we saw how we can uh, synthesize the basic structure required for an operational voltage amplifier starting from the fundamentals. Ideal voltage control voltage source G matrix is defined with these elements being 0 and only the forward transfer parameter being finite and this finite forward transfer parameter in the case of operational amplifier will become very high or go towards infinity. Okay. So, this is the standard procedure for synthesis of any of these control sources, whether it is starting from voltage control voltage source or current control current source or current control voltage source or voltage control current source. One must start with the corresponding idealized matrix okay, and make the corresponding forward transfer parameter go towards a very high value or go towards infinity. Then that particular control source becomes that particular type of operational amplifier. It could become operational voltage amplifier or operational current amplifier or operational transconductance amplifier or operational trans resistance type of amplifier. These are the only four types of operational amplifiers that can exist. So, today we will see a specific structure which we have assembled. We said for taking care of the input impedance, input impedance should go towards infinity or input conductance should go towards 0. That is done by the input stage by proper selection of the input stage and its biasing current. Then the output resistance should go towards 0, output impedance should go towards 0. That is taken care of by selecting the proper stage for the output that is common collector stage. And the very purpose of operational amplifier for operational purpose requires the forward parameter to go to a very high value that is done by the intermediate stage. We could have obviously improved this G f further and decrease this further by cascading more stages, but that will complicate the stage in terms of causing the state to have more number of time constants which will determine the open loop okay, transfer parameter and therefore then result in frequency instability problems when used under negative feedback situation. That is why we have frozen the number of stages to 3. Now, let us consider the input stage. We already have obtained this structure for a differential amplifier without using any resistors. So, this differential pair. In this particular case, we have chosen uh, it to be PNP transistor. Assuming that in a technology, given technology, we have good PNP transistors available, we would select that. So, as to make the load, okay, load is now going to be decided by the NPN transistor, which is a current mirror. So, this is the active load which is going to be the NPN current mirror. If we had cho chosen NPN input pair, then in turn we would have to go for PNP current uh, sources or uh, current mirror for the active load. So, this is one way we have chosen primarily because the next stage is important in giving gain and the next stage has to be necessarily NPN. Okay? And the next stage is going to be NPN and it is going to have emitter connected to ground AC wise. That means, emitter should be connected to minus V s and the potential here is going to be 1 divided about minus okay? and therefore, we have naturally this acting as a suitable road without the need for any level shifting stage. Do you now understand why this configuration has been chosen? Okay? That is 
the intermediate stage has got to be the high gain stage. Okay. The good NPN transistor will necessarily have high gain and good speed of operation, high frequency. So this particular thing is going to have very high gain. That means it is a common emitter stage here. Emitter is AC wise grounded. That means it is connected to the most negative potential for biasing purposes. And then from here, you have one diode drop higher. Okay. If you select then the NPN active load, there will not be any need for what? Level shifting, which otherwise you would have needed. So, this is a neat way of getting rid of the level shifting situation. Okay. But of course, we have to worry about getting good PNP as the input pair. That we will see how it can be achieved in practice, where NPN is given dominance okay, and PNP transistors have poor beta. In such situations, right, we might have to see how to modify this further. In a situation where both good PNP and good NPN transistors are available, this can be straight away adopted. Okay, this synthesis can be straight away adopted. The final stage, the output stage, is nothing but the common collector. Positive going signal being taken care of by the NPN and negative going signal being taken care of by PNP structure. Once again, in order that this performance of this okay, composite structure should be good, we have to make NPN and PNP equally good. Once again, we have to see how in a given situation where no good PNP is available, how to modify the structure so as to make it as uh, almost as good as the original NPN. Okay, that we will see later. But once again, we can say that when we have a technology where both NP and PNP are available, we can straight away adopt this simple structure as the basic structure for an operational amplifier. So, this kind of topology selection can be done even when we are told that the op amp to be designed should be coming out of a MOSFET structure or it should be a BIMOS structure. We can then think of appropriate stages using appropriate transistors. For example, if you are asked to design the stage using BIMOS structures, then naturally input stage could be straight away MOS because we can make this go towards 0 straight. The input stage can be straight away a MOS structure. Okay. The differential structure with this kind of active load using MOS, we know how to do it. Then the second structure will be retained as bipolar because GM of a given bipolar for any operating current is going to be one order of magnitude definitely higher than that of the corresponding fat. So this is going to be bipolar common emitter. Next one, good output stage with automatic short circuit protection could be a CMOS inverter itself. It will give you gain okay, and can also act as a decent output stage giving you almost the full swing possible. And it is automatically short circuit protected because right, it is actually operating in the current saturation mode and therefore this is how we can come up with a, a sort of by MOS op amp. Okay. Input MOSFET stage, intermediate bipolar stage and output could be a CMOS inverter. Right. But the output, the power, the CMOS is yeah. Most of, ratio. yeah. Most of these stages, all of these stages in fact, have the same power ability. Okay. They are not basic stages, but what the one way to increase the power 
handling ability of this transistor is to merely change the geometry of the device, right. If you make identical geometry devices, they will all have equal power dissipation ability, right. So, basically these are not power uh, op amps. We can even design power op amps if we make the output stage truly a power stage. Here output stage is merely used as a low output impedance source, that is all. Is this clear? Now, let us see some of the components that are coming here. We will discuss this part slightly later. This comes into picture for frequency compensation. This capacitor is internally put in internally compensated op amps. Otherwise, these two terminals are brought out in externally compensated op amps, wherein the uh, user has to put suitable capacitor okay, for its use. Load resistance can be connected externally. Now, the symbol for this op amp could be differential input, the dual power supplies and the output, all of this with reference to a common ground. Okay. So, output is available with reference to a common ground. We have op amps available with uh, if V naught is A times, let us say A is the open loop gain or right, that is actually G F. Okay. So, A times V 1 minus V 2 you have what are called as dual output op amps, differential input, differential output op amps, where you can also get minus A times V 1 minus V 2, okay. That you can see in a differential structure that is already available, okay. If one is A times V 1 minus V 2, the other one is minus A times V 1 minus V 2. So, in a suitable application, you can make it differential output, differential input. These are all the variations available to you. Now, obviously, you can notice this uh, mode of uh, biasing. This is a current mirror okay, for obtaining low value current. This we know. How we can obtain a current which is V t log I 1 by I 2 divided by R e as equal to I 2. Okay. If I 1 is the current in this, I 2 is the current in this, we know that I 2 is going to be V t log I 1 by I 2 divided by R e. So, given a circuit, you can quickly arrive at the value of the operating current here, because you know the value of R A, you know, okay. In fact, uh, uh, this equation has to be solved. Okay, you can assume a value for I two, and get the value for I two. Okay, iteratively you solve this, and ultimately you'll approach the correct value of I two. So, given the supply here, plus V S and minus V S. The biasing current I1 okay, is going to be 2 V s minus V gamma by R. Okay. The biasing current, main biasing current, okay, which is taken as the reference, is going to be 2 V s minus V gamma by R. Now, you can using this equation, you can solve for I 2 and get the value of I 2. In a typical situation, this will be of the order of tens of kilo ohms okay? and this current is going to be of the order of milli ampere okay? and this current is going to be of the order of few micro amperes. Okay? And typically, therefore, the input resistance of this which is going to be beta plus 1 times 2 R A okay, is going to be of the order of uh, mega ohm or so. Why? 
mainly because you are operating at current of the order of micro amperes. Okay. Re being equal to Vt by uh, I2 by 2. Right. So, you can evaluate the input impedance of this stage. It has been made on the open loop to be of the order of mega ohms typically. So, then what else? Gain. When V i is applied here, V i by 2 R e is the change in current superimposed over and above. Let us see, draw that. This is going to be I 2 by 2 and this is going to be I 2 by 2. Okay. And we are, will have okay, this current if it is increasing by some amount, this will decrease by the same amount. So, if we have this as let us say plus delta i, this will be minus delta i and we will have this as i 2 by 2 minus delta i. And we see here that we have a current of 2 delta i being pumped into this. This under the situation that all these things are behaving like ideal current sources of things. Obviously, right, what it simply means this is that this stage is taking away the entire signal current. That is not the case. Actually speaking, what happens is there will be finite impedance here, finite impedance here due to this, okay, and the input impedance, okay, that is going to effectively act as the load and voltage will be developed. Here it is shown as though it is 2 delta i times the input impedance of the next stage. Right? That is primarily because we have ignored the output impedance of these current sources and things. Okay? So, under the situation that most of the current is going into this, right? the current that is coming here is going to be, this is base current. So, if you ignore the capacitor, this is going to be beta times that current. Okay? And that has to develop a an output voltage here. Once again, the load here in the absence of RL, if RL is infinity, is going to be determined by primarily the output impedance of this current source. Okay? If you put an RL here, then you have to Consider the effect of RL here, which is nothing but beta plus 1 times RL here appearing, shunting this output impedance. Now, at every point you see the need for knowing clearly what the impedance levels are. Okay? This impedance has to be pretty high, so that the gain, which is nothing but beta times 2 delta i into whatever impedance is seen there, which is nothing but beta plus 1 times r okay, shunted by the output impedance of this okay, is made as large as possible. Now, what is the operating current of this? How do you find out the gain of this stage? Right? If, you, okay, if you are told that these are not given in terms of currents, but I give the impedance levels here, impedance level here, and you can find out the impedance level here because the operating current of this is known. If this is 2 V s minus V gamma by R. If this is a current mirror, the same current will flow through this. Okay? And therefore, you know the R e of this. And the gain of this is going to be nothing but the impedance at the collector divided by R e of this. Right? So, obviously, this is going to operate at higher current than any of this. R e has to be made low. But ob when you make RE low, you have to be aware of the fact that okay, it is going to load this also. The impedance level here comes down. So naturally, we have to see that the impedance level here does not come down. So we have to increase the beta. Right? One way to increase the beta is to use a Darlington pair. Okay? So these are all the modifications that might have to be adopted here. Okay? Here again, we can increase the impedance level by putting emitter regeneration resistors okay, or using uh, Wilson current 
measures. Okay? So we can uh, improve the gain of this whole thing by adopting proper techniques. But given a situation now, we are able to obtain the open loop gain of this stage. Right? What is the open loop gain of this particular stage? 2 delta i into beta into the effective collector resistance at this point. That is the DC open loop gain, DC. So I know the input impedance, okay? so I know this parameter, okay? 1 over that input resistance. Okay? I know the open loop gain, that means I know GF. Right. Now, how do I evaluate the output impedance? No, this is not very easy because you are saying this is going to be class B. Then operating current is zero. Okay, so you have to assume some class A B biasing. That is ultimately we will see that this is not class B at all. It is made class A B. So there is going to be some amount of current in this. Okay, so you can evaluate the value of R E at that particular point. Uh, most of the time, the output impedance is going to be governed by this. Okay, plus this divided by Okay. The impedance level here being high, okay, the output impedance of this is rather governed by mostly this divided by beta, beta plus 1. Okay. Apart from that, you have to also take into account if you are likely to put this is an output stage, therefore it will require short circuit protection automatically. And again, the same scheme of current sensing resistors have to be put here in order to divert the drive. This we will bring in later slightly, okay, the protection scheme. But it is exactly similar to what we had discussed for the voltage regulator. So there will be series resistances coming in series with these emitters and they will naturally come as additional output resistances. Okay. So next, what about the common mode swing as far as this is concerned. We have now evaluated all these parameters. This is for all practical purposes 0. Okay. So we know the uh, way to evaluate the actual G parameters of a given operational amplifier, given the configuration. Now let us see something about large signal effect. As far as the common mode signal is concerned, we are going to connect this together. And then the common mode voltage can vary as much as one diode drop here. This can come up to this, no problem. And there is one more diode drop. So two diode drop less than Vs. That is the maximum limit of common mode voltage. Here, as far as minimum is concerned, let us see, swings one diode drop okay, higher than minus Vs. So you can straight away see that it has the maximum common mode signal swing desired okay, so as to prevent any what? Why do you want this kind of common mode uh, swing? Latch a problem when you use it again in negative feedback situation. Okay. So this stage has been therefore well chosen. Okay. And that is why uh, very few changes have taken place over the years okay, as to the, the topology of the configuration that is going to act as input stage. Okay. Then <coughs> as far as the output is concerned, once again you can see output can swing. That means two diode drops less than Vs. And once again, let us come here. Okay. So one diode drop collector, two diode drops higher than minus Vs, which is in conformity with what is happening for the common mode voltage almost at the input. Okay. Now, that is as much 
for the large signal effect. Now, we will come to the most important point about uh, operational amplifier. So, I want to now talk about two important parameters associated with op amp. One is bandwidth, okay, need for frequency compensation, and the second one is slew rate, which is a large signal parameter. First one is a small signal parameter, bandwidth. <coughs> and then slow it. So, let us see what is the need for frequency compensation briefly I would like to touch upon. So, that most of these op amps are likely to be used in a negative feedback situation. Let us see what. In this particular case, it is a voltage amplifier and therefore, its open loop gain is going to be let us say A naught divided by how many stages are there? 3 stages. So, there are likely to be 4 time constants. Okay. So, 1 plus S by omega 1 to 1 plus S by omega 2, 1 plus S by omega 3. If this is the first corner frequency, this is the second one, this is the third one, this is the farthest one. In practice, okay, for a general purpose op amp like 741 or 747, the first corner frequency occurs okay, at about 1 megahertz. F1 is going to be around 1 megahertz. So, what it means is that if you plot the gain, this is going to be almost flat up to 1 megahertz, then it will start falling at 6 dB per octave or 20 decibels per decay and then it will start okay this is going to be f1 this is going to be f2 this is going to be f3 and maybe f4 is out of uh, by the time f4 comes to picture right the gain has become less than 1 okay so in the useful range where the gain is greater than 1 okay it seems only this f1 f2 and F3 come into picture. Okay. Magnitude of A naught A. Magnitude of A versus frequency. So that means strictly speaking, you have a possible gain of something like 10 to power 5 to 10 to power 6 that is the order of open loop gain typical order of open loop gain for most of these common operational amplifiers bipolar 10 to power 5 to 10 to power 6 and a bandwidth of about 1 megahertz St strictly speaking you should have okay a gain bandwidth product of 10, 10 to power 6 megahertz 10 to power 5 to 10 to power 6 megahertz but you are not able to use this band. Okay? That is because there is a cluster of these poles influencing the phase shift over the frequency range. So, that means even when the gain is high greater than 1, okay, this has already come into picture and causes the gain to have a phase variation with respect to frequency. This next comes into picture. So, 
obviously somewhere in between now what is the phase shift at this point if only due to this not due to other things at the corner frequency it is going to be 45 degrees right at the corner frequency if the other poles are not influencing it is going to be 45 because j omega 1 you will put 1 plus j so it is going to be 45 degrees here by the time you go out of this assuming that this is now contributing more of its phase shift and already has contributed enough okay totally giving a phase shift of 90 degrees so when the next comes let us say this will contribute 45 so you have 135 here right it may be more if these are very close to one another if they are farther away from one another this is likely to be 135 so it is 135 or more here right obviously in a frequency range between this and this it is likely when they are staggered for a part only otherwise it can come anywhere here also the phase shift can become equal to 180 degree then it will start oscillating in that negative feedback situation right so if the loop gain that is a into beta is still greater than 1 then there is a possibility of it oscillating if a into beta beta is the feedback factor okay is less than 1 when this 180 degree phase shift occurs it is not going to oscillate for all values of beta if it is to work then the worst case value for beta is 1 okay so a general purpose op amp is designed designed okay for making this a become less than 1 when the phase shift of the entire thing becomes equal to 180 degree that is done artificially by shifting these poles okay one of these poles to this side artificially cutting down the gain so if you cut down the gain what happens the gain starts falling much earlier and then by the time this first pole comes into picture the gain has been made less than one okay that is what is called as dominant pole compensation system which is universally adopted for most of the internally compensated op amp so that anybody using it okay it will never give trouble there is enough margin of safety so that it works even if there is additional phase shift given by the uh, beta determining network itself okay offers some additional phase shift still it is not going to be unstable so for this eventuality you cut down this game so you can see that actually speaking this particular amplifier has lost most of its useful bandwidth simply in order to make everybody use it in all sorts of negative feedback configuration suppose therefore you are designing your own amplifier for a specific gain then there is no need for so much of a margin okay that is why the uh, manufacturers also have given the same configuration almost without the internal capacitor being connected the provision for you to connect it so as to increase the frequency of usage of that okay but however in this case they would like to put as small a capacitor as possible inside for compensation because we know that capacitor takes lot of area within the ICJ so the basic idea behind compensation inside is always this that the capacitor should be always connected to two high impedance points if it, they are available okay why because i told you the time constant that determines okay the cutoff frequency always depends upon the capacitor into the net resistance across the capacitor okay that is the time constant which determines the reduction in gain so obviously you should connect it to two high impedance points now 
the two high, high impedance points available straight away for you inside the structure are this one and this one. Okay. Those high impedance points should have obviously the signal phase shift of 180 degrees so that the connected capacitor will result in negative feedback. Okay. So, this capacitor comes into picture as what is called Miller capacitor that is another way of looking at the thing. Right? Because you are connecting it between two high impedance points okay, at the input it will come as a huge value of capacitance. So, that means essentially now we can consider that this is the time constant which determines the gain reduction. Okay. So, effectively these time constants are all going to be replaced by this particular time constant and it is enough if we discuss most of the op amp application only using a simple model for the op amp which says A is equal to A naught divided by 1 plus S by omega dominant. That is called single pole roll off characteristic, dominant pole, okay, which is created by the compensating capacitor. Now, essentially, this frequency comes pretty close to 0. Typically, it is of the order of few hertz. Okay. That means, in most of the applications of the op amp, right which is much greater than hertz, okay. you can consider that op amp gain is A naught divided by. That means, the op amp itself is acting like right, an integrator. Right. In its transfer function, you can see it is acting like an integrator or what is this equal to A naught into omega d by yes. Uh, this is called gain into bandwidth. Okay. So, uh, this is called A naught into omega d is called an important parameter which is gain bandwidth product of the op amp, which is a measure of the quality of the op amp up to what frequency it can be used etcetera with what value of gain. Okay. So, this is a measure of the quality of the op amp, an important parameter, small signal parameter. So, let us now see how this can be roughly estimated from the internal structure. That is what we are interested in finding out. Let us once again come to this. This is V2, V1 and this is V i. So, we, if you have V i, the current in this is going to be let us say I 2 by 2, I 2 by 2 okay. and uh, this is minus, minus delta i, this is going to be plus delta i and now you can see that delta i is going to be 2 delta i is going to pump it into this. Now, I can replace this whole thing only for signal picture as an amplifier op amp itself. This is grounded okay, and you have a situation of an amplifier with very high gain because most of the gain of the amplifier is concentrated here, neither here nor there. Right? So, this 2 delta i is going to now flow through the capacitor because of the Miller effect anyway. right? So, very little current goes through this and most of it goes through the capacitor and develops a potential which is 2 delta i divided by S c. Okay. Is this clear? With this n minus and this n plus and this potential is already at nearly ground potential. Okay, because this is a high gain stage. Right? So, by just 
replacing delta i, what is delta i in this particular case? Is equal to 2 delta i. Delta i is equal to v i by 2 r into s. Is this clear? You might be wondering at this approximation, because this is a similar approximation as in here. If you do not make the approximation, you would have got the gain as A naught by 1 plus S by omega d, that is all. Okay? What is that? If you have considered all these impedances and then consider the Miller effect capacitor shunting it, then you would have got the output as A naught by 1 plus S by omega d. We are not interested in all these things. We want only the gain bandwidth product. So, straight away we can go for the approximation and we see that gain bandwidth product of the op amp is equal to how much is that? Re into 1 over that is uh, Gb is equal to 1 over Re into C. What is Re? Vt okay, divided by I2 by 2. Now, we know the designer knows the operating current of this transistor. It is of the order of microamperes. C, you put of the order of picofarads. Vt already you know. Then if you do this, you will get gain bandwidth product. This is actually omega. You have to convert it into F. Okay? So, 1 over 2 pi you have to make. Then it will be of the order of mega. Okay, automatically get it as R. so. Please work it out for a typical situation where I2 is of the order of microamperes and C is of the order of picofarads. Okay, Vt is known 25 millivolts. Okay, this is going to give you omega. So if you convert it to F, you will get it as order of one mega which is typically what it is for uh, 741 type of op amps. Now you know how you can manipulate the gain bandwidth product based on bias current and compensating capacitor. So given the configuration, you immediately can now tell about the gain bandwidth product of the op amp. You should be able to. Is this clear? Now, just this is a small signal parameter. Exactly in a similar manner, we can argue something for the last signal parameter. Please follow me very carefully here. After a certain point of time, we can no longer say delta i is okay, v i by 2 r a. It is non linear. We can only say that V i depend, uh, delta i depends upon V i, it is not linear. So, we are going into that region where okay, delta i is non-linear, really dependent on V i. We are not bothered about that. What happens as V i increases is delta i goes closer to i naught by 2. At that point of time, when delta i becomes equal to I2 by 2, this transistor is off. This transistor is being given the total current. Thereafter, further increase in Vi is not going to change anything as far as the circuit is concerned. So, this will pump a current of I2 into this. When a DC current of I2 is pumped into a capacitor, current of I2 is getting pumped into a capacitor, what will be the voltage? I2 by C into T. DC current I2 getting pumped into the capacitor, voltage across the capacitor is okay, 1 over C integral I dt. So, I2 is a constant, so I2 by C into T. 
That means after this, the op amp gives up, says, look, you are demanding too much from me, right? I cannot increase at a rate, okay, higher than the rate which is I2 by C. What is the, this is equal to nothing but V0, right? So the gain of this stage is unity, right? So, B V0 by DT max is nothing but I2 by C. And that is defined by the manufacturer as slew rate. This is an important parameter of the op amp which every user must understand thoroughly before using it in any application. Okay. Actually, this is grossly misunderstood most of the time. That is why I am insisting that you should understand this very well. This is the highest rate at which output is capable of rising. If you demand higher rate than this of the op amp, output will rise at slew rate. So, this is not dependent upon actual value of the signal, but depends upon the rate at which okay, voltage rises. And this happens normally if it is a sine wave that you are expecting at the output okay, when zero crossing occurs. Okay. So, this distortion starts occurring not at the highest signal level, but at the lowest signal level. Okay where the zero crossing occurs, where the rate is the highest for a sinusoid. Okay? So, you will see that if you are expecting a sinusoidal output at the output of the op amp and if you are demanding higher rate than the slew rate, the sine wave starts getting distorted, gradually transforms itself at around zero into a triangular waveform. Unlike other distortions, which are mostly signal level dependent distortions. This is rate dependent distortion. Okay. So, I 2 by C and you can again find out what the value of this is going to be. I 2 is of the order of microamperes and C is of the order of picofarads and therefore, typical slew rate is of the order of volts per microsecond. Okay. Typical slew rate of this is of the order of volts per microsecond, 741 like op amps. Okay. So, with these properties well understood, we can actually analyze any given IC and see what its uh, small signal and large signal parameters are. Also, given the task of designing a specific IC, we can attribute specific values for the various components within the IC. Thank you.